I bet you're asking yourself, why on earth do I need a fret press call and a radius insert? It's because sometimes I don't want to have to use a hammer to insert frets on a guitar like I had to do on my last guitar building project. <laughs> Now, I could buy a cheaply made one for about 50 bucks on a website that rhymes with Shamashan, or a brand named one that rhymes with Stumac for about $200 or a complete set for like three or 400 bucks included in Arbor Press. Or I can use my machine shop and build one myself. I've also got a 3D printer for making the radius. I eventually might turn that into brass, but I'm not expecting everybody to have the same tools as me. I hope you can enjoy this video and see some of the tools that I used to build this fret press call and radius insert. So after that slot for that little 3D printed part was done, I need to make another slot for this, this little wiggly guy right here. So we still have a little bit of work to do on here. I'll be drilling and tapping holes there for little inserts, grub screws, bolt, whatever I'm going to use. And I'm not quite happy with this. I, I, I want it to be sticking in nice and deep. I wanted it higher up, as well as maybe a little bit more support than just this, maybe some wings on the side. So I've gone into Tinkercad and I'm mocking up this right here. I've widened the bottom piece by a little bit and the height of it matches the height here. And how do I know that? Measuring tools. This green part will act as a little bit of a shoulder for here so that it gives it a little bit something extra to rest on. And then I've given a little bit extra height here as well as put the number 10 on. Before I combine this into one solid shape, I may make a couple other sizes that have, you know, this one says the 10 but I've got access to a bunch, all the way from 7.5 up to 44. I've used Tinkercad before, I'm by no means an expert, but I'm gonna always make a backup in case I need to change things. I've copied and pasted this over, and now I can go and group it. Let's see, group, here we go. That turns into a solid shape, or at least it looks like it, so that I'm gonna be able to send that STL file into Cura. So I have a Ender 3 at home, I put this on its side so that there shouldn't need to be supports or overhang. I've set my quality to super and I want to do a 100% infill so that it is solid. When I go to slice it, give it a moment, I love this part where it uh, allows me to see what it's actually going to look like for the layers. This part's always kind of cool. The big thing here is making sure that it's nice and strong. There we go, that looks like it should be nice and hopefully it's gonna be smooth enough and stuff. So we've had the Ender 3 for about a month. Prior to that, we had a Monoprice Mini version 2. And we're gonna let this shape run for the next two hours. All right, got that thing done. We'll do a test fit later. Okay, so that 3D printed part I made fits. That's pretty decent. I was going to have a screw here that holds it in, but I think friction's gonna be enough for now. I will still need to drill and thread this 
I found a 5 16 that I'm going to be using. That's going to go all the way through to hold on its little up and down part. If I want to make a hole in here and thread it, I'm going to use this one. This is a 932. It's two sizes smaller. Now if you get a proper tap and die chart, it'll probably give you a specific size drill. This is going to work though with two sizes smaller. So I have my hole, it's a 932, and here I have a 5 16 NC tap. I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure while going clockwise, and I'm gonna add threads to both sides of that hole. See inside there, I've got threads. I should be able to put that in there next. There you go, perfect. So this is a one ton arbor press. I picked it up for $100 at Princess Auto. That's basically the Canadian version of Harbor Freight. This now needs to somehow attach there. I made a quick sketch here. This is what I want to make out of one inch round steel, except for this part. This part's not gonna go rounded. This is gonna be a flat part. So I'm going to have to make this part in diameter actually larger than a half inch to start. I'll probably go with three quarter. Then I'll have to go in the mill and make this part flat. This part here, there's a small recess, like there, for a bolt from the arbor press to go in and then hold it probably about there. I've given a little bit extra wiggle room. I have a little bit of space to play with. All right, it almost fits. I need to trim about uh, just over an eighth inch off the end, so I'll face that in a minute. And I need to widen this little recess, which is gonna allow that bolt to go through the arbor press and kind of hold it in. I'm keeping that extra wide. The bolt itself is only a 5 16 but I'm gonna make this little recess about half an inch wide. There, made it a little bit shorter, made that a little wider. Perfect, that'll fit. I'll be able to screw that in. That's gonna hold it in. Good, see? I could go a little tighter, but that's not gonna fall out. Excellent.
perfect for that. Now temporary or perhaps 3D printed call piece will go in there. Excellent, that's just a nice press fit. I don't think I'm gonna have to add a bolt to that. But if I do, that's an easy, uh, easy one. Okay, there's a little bit of a wiggle, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted there to be enough so that it can kind of self-center itself depending on how the neck is installed. I was gonna round out the bottom of this, but it should be good. Let's insult into the Arbor Press and see how it looks. That's gonna hold on to right here, that little recessed part. Just loosen it a little bit. There we go. I'm just gonna finger tighten it for now. A little bit of a wiggle, that's exactly what I wanted it to be able to do. Am I gonna have to modify this? Can I even fit a guitar underneath? Looks like I will be able to, but I don't wanna put a guitar directly on this. I'm gonna have to build a little platform that can hold it. I'll be doing this when it's not mounted to a body. I'd for sure, you know, have a piece of rubber or something underneath. But now I should be able to press frets. In. Now this is one that's already installed, but this tool is gonna to be able to be used for my next guitar project. I know this makes no sense, because there's strings, this thing's already done, but it should be able to up and down, go in there. If I have a different radius, I can take it out, put it in. Now I'll be able to 3D print a whole bunch of different inserts because I set up my file to just change that part in and out, print it in about two hours. I mostly stuck to the plans that I created. You know, it kind of turned out pretty close. What really matters for this, this isn't a tutorial saying, this is how to do it. This is how I did it. You may have to change things to work with the materials that you have. You could make this out of wood. You could probably 3D print one of these and it might work for you. And then send me an STL file if you can. That'd be cool. We can all share and help each other out. This piece, I'd probably have that out of something hard. I've seen people make them out of wood, but I wanted to teach myself how to make one out of metal. I think it turned out fairly accurate based on what I was trying to do. All right, so I thought I was done, but I decided I'm gonna add something else. And let me show you what I'm gonna do. I made a line here. I'm gonna add a line here and a line there just to make it look a little cooler, like the professional ones. Okay, I had more to go, maybe another two or three millimeters, but I kind of want to keep that small little shoulder thing right there. I'll do the same thing to the other side now. That ain't too bad, I like that. Okay, that looks so much better, doesn't it? It looks professional, it's got angles. It looks like I cared about it, well, except for that part. Anyways, over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. Oh, that looks nice. Come on, that's so much better than spending $32 on eBay, or 50 on Amazon, or 250 at StuMac. I spent about two hours to print that 3D part. Probably could build this again in maybe an hour and a half. Again, I was going slow, kind of making up some of the measurements as I went. And then the other part on the lathe, that was maybe 30 minutes of machining. And then another on the lathe to make the flat part here, maybe another 10 minutes. And then here and there to make it look nice. Arbor Press, 100 bucks. Now I have a machine shop, lucky me. I teach this kind of stuff. Uh, so not everybody has that kind of stuff available and that's okay. You do what you can with what you got. I wanted to build one so I could show students and anybody who else is watching that you can make some of these tools if you really, really want to and don't want to have to uh, pay for it. I'm really excited to test this out. So please stay tuned for when I do that. Like, comment, subscribe, all that normal stuff. I'm excited to try this out. Thanks for watching. Bye.